Toronto, so I work in apartments, so it's pretty much every apartment building is owned by uh, a nice old Jewish man or a nice old Italian man. That's pretty much it. So, and, and when I extend down that path, I think of the developers and all of these guys and how they negotiate and get deals done. Um, how did these guys approach you over the years? And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, like you are as ethical as can be, but did anybody ever try to, you know, oh, Jennifer, maybe we'll give you this cottage or something if you allow our development to go through. Is there anything like that? <laughs> well, you know, first of all, let me say I have lots of stories, um, <laughs> yeah. which I will never tell. Um, <laughs> And you're right. I, I think I got a reputation very quickly for being pretty, obviously being very ethical and being very clean in how I approach things. And when people know that about you, um, they don't even try because they know they're not going to get anywhere. Um, but I still do have some very, very funny stories of people trying um, that, you know, and most of them are they're just really funny stories. That's all they that that's all they are. Mm. But I also did a bunch of things um, for lack of a better word to make the process cleaner and clearer. So yeah. there's been a tradition for many years in Toronto of developers bringing their lawyers to meetings to negotiate. And the city planners are in a really bad position because they don't have counsel in the room, but they're negotiating with someone else's lawyer. So one of the things that I did right when I became chief planner was I said, from now on, no more lawyers in the room. And we tell developers that if they bring their lawyer, we are bringing our lawyer and we need to, which is what the way it should be. Right. Right. And so we staff had, I would argue had been pushed around for quite a bit. Um, and you know, fair enough on the industry side, they were getting away with what they could. So I had this, uh, one meeting with, um, with a developer who will remain unnamed, but who fits the description that you've put forward. And he showed up with his lawyer and we went into the negotiation and I pulled him outside in the hallway and I said, can we just chat for a minute? And he came out in the hallway and I said, look, I said, uh, this is actually a planning matter. It's not a legal matter, this negotiation. And my planning staff are prepared to negotiate with your planner, but not with your lawyer. Your lawyer should not be in the room. And we believe we can come to a um, satisfactory resolution planner to planner. And we, you know, we don't want the threat of, um, of a solicitor. Uh, in the in the conversation, changing the entire dynamic of the negotiation in the conversation. And I can tell you, I thought he was going to fall through the floor. He was like, you're, you're going to you want me to ask him to leave? And I said, I'm so sorry. But yes, you're going to have to ask him to leave. <laughs> and he was I honestly thought he was going to fall through the floor. Like, I don't think anyone had kind of pushed back with them in this way. But what that did was it hit the reset button and it started giving my my planners more authority to negotiate as planners with other planners instead of always being back on their heels because they were negotiating with a lawyer and they're not lawyers and they right. shouldn't be negotiating with a lawyer. So um yeah there's some there's some great stories. Most of them are just most of them are just funny stories. You know, there's there's no big movie in this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet.